Welcome to Electron Online. Before we try to understand what a, what a Laplace transform is in more detail, in a more conceptual way, let's at least address the mathematical way of finding a Laplace transform. So let's say that we have a function and the function is equal to the sine of omega t. And we're trying to find the Laplace, the Laplace transform of that particular function and this is how you write it. It's like we use the letter L uh, script L times in the brackets we have f of t and that then converts it into the s domain or the frequency domain depending upon what kind of application we have and so mathematically the Laplace transform is defined as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function times e to the minus st dt now typically the function is defined in such a way that time begins at some point in time so that the driving force doesn't, hasn't existed forever. At some point in time, when time equals zero, that's when the driving force, that's when the pull starts, that's when the, uh, the step function starts. So typically, the function is not defined. It is equal to zero for time less than zero. And then when time equals zero, that's when the function, that's when the driving force starts. So therefore, instead of integrating from minus infinity to infinity, we end up integrating from zero to infinity times the function e to the st, a minus st dt. And of course, our function is in this case the sine of omega t e to the minus st, d, st dt. Now, how do we integrate that? Well, we want to convert the sine of omega t into this format right here. So then we have this. This is sine of omega t times e to the minus st. When we multiply this in and we take the 1 over 2j out of the integral sign, then we have e to the minus the quantity s minus j omega t and then minus the quantity s plus j of omega t subtracted from one another. So we still have the negative there. We rearrange the terms in such a way that we have a minus and a minus here times dt. So now we can integrate. Now remember when we have e to the minus some constant times t dt that is equal to negative 1 over a, the constant, times e to the minus at plus a constant of integration. Here we leave out the constant of integration because we, we have the limits of integration. So we use the same thing again. So here we see that if we're going to integrate this, it will be negative 1 over s minus j omega times e to the same exponent and then we have negative 1 over s plus j omega times e to the same exponent because the negative then will cancel out the negative and it will become a positive. We want to then find the limits of integration from 0 to infinity. Notice when we plug in the upper limit since it's a negative exponent and t goes to infinity that will become 0. When we plug in the lower limit e to the 0 becomes 1 and of course we subtract when we plug in the lower limit. Same over here, plug in the upper limit, infinity, e to the negative infinity is zero, and then plug in the lower limit, minus e to the zero, which is minus one. So then we realize that when we work this out, uh, this minus will cancel out that minus, we get one over s minus j omega, minus from this minus right here, one over s plus j of omega, all multiplied times one over two j. And now remember what we said in the previous video, once we convert it into the, into the frequency domain or into the S domain, it simply becomes an algebraic exercise once we've transformed it. And luckily, we will have a table of various transformations so we don't have to go through this process every single time that we want to get a, a Laplace transform. We can simply go look at the table and see what the Laplace transform is for any particular function like the sine of omega t. And after a while, you, you memorize some of these transformations. All right, algebraically we're going to put over the common denominator. Then you see that the numerator then simplifies to 2j omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. Remember when you square the denominator you get s squared. The middle term disappears because you have alternate signs and the right and the second term will be the square of this but with a minus in front of it but j squared is a negative one so that cancels out the negative so you end up with a plus omega squared. Then you see that the 2j in the numerator here cancels out the 2j in the denominator. And finally, the Fourier, or not the Fourier, but the Laplace transform of our sine omega t is simply omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. And of course, s squared, that's in the s domain. Then, of course, we would then transform the solution back to the original 
time domain function and then we'll get the final solution but we'll show you examples of how to do that here we simply wanted to get a an example of a mathematical method to find the Fourier transform of a typical function like the sine of omega t notice that this is the mathematical formula it's an integral from negative infinity to infinity of the function times e to the minus s t dt that's the standard form of the Laplace transform and typically since we start time equals zero and that's when the function start the driving function starts we integrate from zero to infinity instead of from negative infinity to infinity and then you can see the process for this particular example you end up with the function in the frequency domain or in the s domain and then once we have that we then transform it back into the time domain to get the final solution but you'll see plenty of examples and plenty of applications for that you'll see how you take a circuit you then find the uh, the time domain um, the time domain function then you do the transform then you find the frequency domain function you manipulate it you come back and then you find the final solution and by the way once you have the table that you use the table it's kind of a cinch this is of course a little bit more difficult but with the tables as you will see in the future not a problem at all so hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea what a Laplace transform is and we'll again develop the conceptual feel and then finally we'll show you a lot of applications to come